Evan Smith here for Princeton TV. Evan Smith here for FightCornerNews.com. Can you talk a little bit about how these type of playoffs might prepare you for a potential Yankee playoff series down the road? I think, you know, anytime you get at bats, it's 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 good. That was your first fight since uh, 2012. Uh, what initiated that? Um, I think it was just him trying to spark something maybe. Yeah. You guys moved the puck really well tonight. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I thought guys did a great job just, just controlling, um, being confident with the puck, making play. I feel like you guys have had a lot of leads going to the fourth quarter this year that have uh, dissipated. Um, is a lot of that clock management, or what um, what, what can you guys do yeah. to improve upon that? Uh, just have bigger leads. Tell me a little bit, uh, you fought Bernard. What kind of uh, you know champion is he? What what do you think he's going to bring to this fight on November 8th? What do you Defense is kind of one of those aspects of baseball that is often overlooked. You, you know, you're known for your glove at short. Uh, how, how important is that to, for the defense to make the uh, plays out there? Well, I mean, you know the famous saying, the defense wins championships, and I think that's a huge thing that is overlooked. Um, so you started game one. Take us through that a little bit. Um, if anything I learned from game one is, um, you know, I came out and I was trying not to let my emotions run too high. You know, you got caught up in August uh, from Tampa. You know, just tell me what it's been like so far. Yeah, um, got called up August 1st um, from Tampa to, to Trenton. And Actually, there's been talk about maybe Manny coming to New York. I know you've had the last two fights this, you know, in the last two weeks uh, in New York. Do you think maybe uh, Manny would come to you know New York and maybe at the Garden? Oh, man, man, Manny loves to travel. He likes the world. And on that, I've heard a lot of different arguments um, about it, oh, some religious, some non-religious. Uh, wh where do you uh, stand on that? Well, I certainly think that we ought to help people who are refugees. Who are New Jersey may not have Major League Baseball, but the AA Yankees are certainly playing like the Major League team. <laughs> According to Wrangle, that's how you do a proper jab followed by a straight right. It has been 37 years since the last Triple Crown winner, and today we witness history as American Pharaoh crossed the finish line for Victor Espinosa. Their third time was, in fact, the charm. Here at Arm & Hammer Park today, where we're going to catch up with a few Trent Thunder players as they make their playoff push late here in the season.
Coach Coughlin says this game is worth two. Coach Coughlin and the New York Giants are preparing for one of the biggest weeks of the season. Currently, they hold the division lead by a narrow margin with a record of 5-5. Five and five. The defense will have to step up with Kirk Cousins heating up in the last few games. Safety Brandon Merriweather says the defense just has to be consistent and play their game. You play your game. You be consistent. Uh, you play the defense the way, the way it's designed to play. You know, you don't make up things and you don't, you know, you make the play when they come to you. The Board of New Jersey Transit voted over the summer to raise fares by 9%, and commuters who take the service are not happy about the decision. The justification for the move? A $60 million budget gap that the organization is facing. The extra revenue will prevent massive layoffs across the board and also stop service cuts from being made. But a lot of riders feel that with the hike in prices, that service problems and infrastructure issues should be more readily addressed. And for Escobar, he's already let the music take him everywhere. This is the CBS Evening News. Good evening, I'm Evan Smith. Today, major U.S. corporations lined up behind the opening to Cuba. MasterCard, Cisco, Marriott, Pepsi, Caterpillar, and Major League Baseball expressed interest in doing business there. It won't happen right away, but the Cubans we talked to today are just as eager in terms of American relations. It's been 54 years that they've been frozen in time. Scott Pelley reports from Havana. For all any Cuban can tell, Detroit hasn't made a car since 1961. Chevys and Fords, familiar to Eisenhower and Sinatra, live forever. Congress slapped the trade embargo on Cuba in 1960, and only Congress can lift it. Today, some members said they will try to keep that from happening. Here's Nancy Cordes. This is the kind of deal you get when you send your speechwriter to negotiate with a tyrant. Republican Senator Marco Rubio took his opposition to Miami today, where he was joined by a group of Cuban Americans. And what if Congress does lift the embargo? Vicente Arenas in Miami looks at the prospect for American businesses. For hotel chains, it is considered a game changer. If millions of tourists flock to Cuba, they'll need the places. Markets, the Dow is up more than 211, the S&P 21. That puts them in positive territory for the year. A lot of people consider high school and college to be the best years of their lives. So we were surprised that a new survey finds high school seniors aren't having the fun their parents did. Ben Tracy tells us why. Now he's using those same skills to make someone look like himself again. Here's Juliana Goldman. Wow. Voila. Today, as investigators look for clues to why Andres Lubitz deliberately flew a jetliner into a mountain, they found something else, a note that could have prevented it. And at the crashing in the French Alps, crews continue the difficult task of recovering remains of the 150 who died. We have a series of reports. First, Alan Pizzi in the co-pilot's hometown. 
Two people are missing following a gas explosion in New York City yesterday. 24 hours later, the ruins were still smoldering. Four buildings were damaged or destroyed. Nearly two dozen people were hurt. Officials say the explosion may have been caused by a worker improperly tapping the gas line. There is a growing backlash against a law signed yesterday by the governor of Indiana. Supporters of the law say it protects religious freedom, while the opponents say it legalizes discrimination. Here is Adriana Diaz. This is really about limiting the authority of the government to intrude upon the religious freedom of every Hoosier of every faith. Governor Mike Pence signed the Religious Freedom Bill that protects individuals and businesses from government interference when following their religious beliefs. Adriana Diaz reporting. Senate Democratic leader Harry Reid announced today he will not run for a sixth term. Reid is 75 and still recovering from injuries after he fell while exercising. He lost the majority leadership position when the Republicans took back the Senate. Chuck Schumer of New York is likely to succeed Reid as Democratic leader. Overseas, Yemen is becoming the main front in a battle between the two main factions of Islam. Today, forces led by the Sunni Kingdom of Saudi Arabia accelerated their attack on Shiite rebels who are backed by Iran. More now from David Martin. Arab warplanes dropped hundreds of bombs on rebel targets in Yemen in an air campaign that dwarfs the bombing of ISIS in Iraq and Syria. David Martin reporting. While the U.S. is backing Sunni Arabs in Yemen, in Iraq, it's fighting on the same side as Shiite militias who've been helping the Iraqi army, which is trying to kick ISIS out of Tikrit. Holly Williams is following this. U.S.-led airstrikes... And that's the CBS Evening News for tonight. Until next time, I'm Evan Smith. Good night.